thank you very much to Scott and to CSA and my colleagues for giving me the opportunity to talk about the work that we've been doing. So, in terms of talking about the methodology for mapping the SDGs, we think that this is an important thing for you to understand because the SDGs are, as my colleagues have mentioned, something that we need to know not necessarily that a company achieves specifically. And we believe that companies have a major role to play in this and as do the UN. And we want to make sure that we can help them uh, move towards the SDG goals in a way that is relevant to their area of control and area of scope. We think that standards can absolutely assist organizations in playing their part. Um, we also understand that there are a huge number of pressures placed on organizations at this time, and they don't always understand how to go forward. So we say that we want you to get engaged in the SDGs and to do your part, but it's not always easy for you to understand how to do that. So we think that positioning standards can be something that can be very helpful for standards in general, but also for any any organization looking to do that. So the creation of a mapping methodology, we think, was the fundamental piece to this. So starting out to be able to position standards as a tool, we needed to make sure that we had a, a process that we could share with organizations so that you understand if this is a, one of the ways that you're committing to working towards the SDGs, that it's it's credit. So it needed to be credible, it needed to be reproducible, and it needed to be efficient. We also thought that there was some good value in sharing this methodology with you because this may be something that you're trying to achieve as an organization as well. So you may be looking to your other policies or other frameworks to understand how you can link them up to the SDGs and, and demonstrate some of the progress and success that you're having. So at the start of this, we, we obviously looked to be a standards organization at a way if there was something standardized with respect to how to map to the SDGs. And uh, we unfortunately found out that that wasn't the case. There were a number of organizations, including ISO, doing this, but there wasn't a standardized way to, to map that. And so the project looked at how we could create something that would meet our goals of being credible and reproducible and efficient. So this led us to a number of discussions. So these were some of the fundamental tenets of the work that we were doing. And the first part was making sure that we could effectively define a match. So if we're mapping standards to the SDGs, how do we go about defining what a match actually is? And so there's a lot of terminology used around this. Companies should be aligning toward the SDGs. They should be doing their part. Um, we've talked about standards being directly applicable, but we needed to kind of get clear in our minds what it meant when we said that implementing a standard contributed to the SDGs. So we looked at what the extent would be. So we looked at the goals and the targets and indicators. And, and my colleagues have touched on this, but this was a really important part of it because looking at the goals alone, it's not always evident how a standard might contribute to them. So I'll give you give you one specific example. The goal of poverty. So it's not evident how many of the standards would be directly implementing um, a move towards poverty. But when you look down at the specific targets and indicators, there's wording in there that guides you to, to how that linkage might apply. And one of the standards that Ruben highlighted was one of the northern um, infrastructure uh, programs that we talked about, one of the NEC standards. And so some of their infrastructure work certainly supports resilience in the north. It, um, talks about the infrastructure that would be needed to transport the food into the northern communities. And so as a result, once you get to that level, it's very clear how important some of these standards would be to preventing poverty in communities and, and um, helping the people there. So we also looked at the intent of the standard versus the wording of the standard. And this is another important distinction because in some cases, the wording isn't there that would be evident talk about sustainability, we don't talk about poverty within the standards, but should an organization implement them, they would clearly be contributing to them. So uh, to highlight Z662, the oil and gas standard, it doesn't talk about sustainability in there, but the very purpose of the standard itself is to ensure that we don't have releases into the environment, which contributes to uh, clean water, which contributes to life underwater. So it, it takes off a number of the SDGs. So we wanted to make sure that whatever process that we had would look down to the targets of indicator level and would reflect both the wording that we saw on the standard around sustainability as well as the 
intent of the rule stands. And then I also wanted to highlight one of the key tools that was integrated into our process, the Wake SDG tool. Um, this is a, a site that has been prepared by the UN in partnership with the um, with other organizations because they wanted to provide a way of, of doing some kind of linkage. So searching the data to find out where you might be able to find linkages and link back to the SDGs. So I'll highlight where this plays out in our process for further. But this is a tool that I wanted to refer you to because it is very key. It has a good search function and it can really help you link the projects and the policies that you're working on to the SDGs and help you understand where matches might be that you don't necessarily uh, see everything. So with those as um, kind of our baseline, we work together to come up with what a process might look like. So this we share because we think it's, it's something that it's important for you to understand, to understand the depth of thought that's gone into it. When we say that this standard is a tool for implementing the SDGs, that there's a credible process underlying that and we rely on that. So I won't walk through this in detail because it's maybe a little bit more technical than you're interested in, but I, I want you to understand that there's kind of three processes that we follow. So one was based on the project manager looking and conducting a preliminary mapping based on the whole content of the standard. So obviously the, the committee and the project managers working on these standards are, are the first line here. They understand the standard, they understand the conversations that have gone into developing the standard, and they have some technical insight that may not be uh, as easily outside of it. They understand the intent, not just the words that appear in the standard. So they go through and they create a preliminary map telling us what they think this standard can contribute to. So the second uh, parallel process that we would follow then is then following the mapping, they would use the SDG, link SDG tool, and we would look through specifically the practice and the scope to figure out where the linkages may exist. Now, in a process like that, there's always going to be relevant uh, conditions. The English language is healthfully and unhealthfully, delightfully complex, and what it does is it obviously uses a number of words to mean the same thing. So sometimes when you're looking at text, uh, you're gonna have connections that, that use the same word but don't mean the same thing at all. So that's not something that can be done um, autonom autonomously at this point something that has to be done with oversight, but this would be kind of a second level of check for us. So is there anything that we didn't see in the preliminary mapping that might be effective language? And then the third piece was looking at key phrases or wording within the practice of the scope and using um, our SDG dictionary. So in this, we, we set up key phrases to help through this searching process. And then we can use those phrases to match the SDGs. And this is something that is not only going to help us currently, but it's going to help us as we go forward. Because as Mike mentioned, this is something that we want to not only be an outcome of the work we're doing um, with respect to helping you understand how you can standards, but we also wanted to be a tool that helps the standards be forward. So the SDG dictionary place provides us with a third level of checking, but it, it also helps us to say what say the same thing if we mean the same thing. So following these three lines of inquiry, we then compare the mapping results and finalize the mapping outcome. And these are what we're going to move forward and be able to just pass on uh, and make a little bit more transparent so that if you're going through and looking for tools to be able to be able to understand where standards might fit. So our proposed tools for application coming out of the process that we uh, follow is the first one, moving standards towards including documentation of the linkages. So some clarity in the way that the practice and introduction is done so that you understand if I'm implementing this standard, here are the outcomes that I can reasonably expect. Obviously that's a key outcome of this. We want you to know how standards can be used not only for achieving perhaps your management goals or your technical standards goals, but also to contribute to the SDGs. And then the second piece is that we want to be able to have them searchable. So if you're specifically looking for some help in moving towards SDG 11 or SDG 1 on poverty, you can go through and see the types of standards that may assist you in implementing that. So both forward thinking and reverse, if you're looking for, for tools specifically to help you with an SDG that you're struggling with, that you feel like you want to engage in, but you don't necessarily have the, 
methods to do that. And then the third element is looking at how we might improve standards as a tool. So what can we do to make this more clear, to make the linkages more clear? And we've gone through a lot of thinking about how we can better support technical communities in this work so that the next version of standards has had this discussion. So obviously that's a big education piece. We need people to be aware of the SDGs. We need them to be aware of not just the general goal, but looking down at the target and indicator level and understanding where the work that they've done from a technical standards or a management standards perspective might interact or uh, engage with the SDGs. So are there additional things that, that we can do? Are there intersections that may have been discussed before but didn't necessarily make it into the final version? So how can we add this as a layer of thought within the committee so that the this output of them considers the role that standards, this standard specifically may play. So to summarize, what we're hoping is that we will be able to help you position standards as a tool for implementing the SDGs, that we will provide linkages to the existing standards so that you can either understand the standard that you are implementing or look for additional tools to perhaps put in your toolbox as you move your organization more towards integrating this, the SDGs and to improve standards generally for future applications with respect to the SDGs. So very happy to take any questions that you might have specifically with um, the methodology that we've used so that you can understand the process further or to talk about how you might use the, the work that you've done to, to better support your organizations. Thank you.